or plan I've selected to decide where to put these access points. And again, I don't have any obstacles other than the walls. So, you know, no surprises there. So you're seeing here, see these lines along here where it's kind of blue here and over here. This is the areas because I didn't actually draw those walls really well. And so it's giving me some strange patterns on the edges here. And so going back and fixing the building dimensions and making sure the walls are all very accurate will significantly improve the quality of this map. So very important to do. Now, here I'm looking at the 2.4 gigahertz band and if I flip over here I can look at the 5 gigahertz band and as you know in the 5 gigahertz band my signal doesn't travel so far so you should expect the coverage not to be so good so let's take a look and there you can see notice here how the color dimmed and how that maps up here to the RSSI level now Remember how we chose this for for data and not for voice. So let's have a look if I take this and drop it down to minus 67 dBm. Now see here how it's dropping out some white spaces in here. Quite a few white spaces. And again, they might be because of how I drew the wall. Or it might be because I'm actually going to lose some voice coverage there. So that's interesting. So let's go back to the 2.4 gigahertz band. It's looking a lot better. And now I want to show you some of the other things I can do. So let's click on this access point. And over here, I'm going to change the access point here. And I'm going to change that to a 3500E, where the E stands for external antennas. And so now what you notice here is it's giving me the option to change the antenna. And so I can go ahead and choose one. Let's choose this one. And if you want to take a look at what kind of antenna this is, I select this and it brings out a picture. And so I can see that this is an omnidirectional dipole antenna. And notice here the direction of zero degrees and how I can rotate it. So what this is doing is allowing me to change the map so I can point it in different directions. So let's take this to zero and close. And of course, we've got to do that in the 2.4 gigahertz band as well. Let's do that. Put it down. Close that off. And notice here how the arrow changed in this direction. Now, because this is an omni antenna, it really doesn't make any difference to the coverage. But if I had a directional antenna, let's say the access point was a great against a wall and I wanted to use a directional antenna, then by changing the direction of the beam, then it's obviously going to change the coverage. So when I do these maps, it's very important that I choose very carefully the antenna, but also make sure that it's directed in the right direction. Otherwise, I'd be pushing my energy outside of the building as opposed to covering the actual floor. Let's have a look what else we can do. Over here, I can change the power level. So let's drop this all the way down to 7 dBm. And I'm going to do the same in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Now I need to select apply. And now you can see that my coverage has changed. And you can see that I've really reduced down the power. So my signal is now quite weak. And we're starting to see a few more holes where I'd really had coverage problems. And notice that I was just doing it for this one access point. And of course, I can do it also for these access points as well. Now, what I've got up here as well is I can actually stop some of these access points. So I can just take a close look at just one access point or a couple of access points so I can see what's going on. And so here, if I click on this, let me get that power level back up in both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. Again, always remember to click apply. And there you can see I've got stronger signal strength now radiating out. And again, we can play and change some of the antennas if we want to try a different one. Let's see what that one looks like. 
and you start to see it got a little bit more strength out here, a little bit greater coverage. So let me put those other access points back on. Now, the other thing I can do is I can actually move these access points. So let's say I'm aware of an obstacle and, and or I've been out there and I've done some measurements in the field and I said, OK, I just need to tweak this a bit. I can actually move this access point. So let me say I move it a bit further that way. Maybe this one I want to move out into the corridor. This one again out into the corridor and maybe this one a little bit further into the corner. And then I can click apply. Never forget to click apply. And there you can see it's refreshed my map. And obviously, according to this predictive map, I've actually got weaker signals now in the middle. So what I'd like to do now is to go back. We've got add APs. And let's now take a look at what it would have done if I'd selected voice. So I'm going to say calculate. See, it's given me six access points. And now I'm going to come down here and say apply to map. It's going to ask me, am I OK replacing the ones I've got? Yes, I am. And let's take a look. We're looking here at the 5 gigahertz band. Let's take a look at what it looks like in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Mm -hmm. And you're saying to myself, well, this doesn't look as good as what I had before when I had four. And that's because I didn't change the access point. So let's put this back to the 3500i. Click apply. Drop it down into the 2.4 gigahertz band. And there you see. So in that illustration, see how easy it was for me? I forgot to change the access point. And so by going back in, I changed it. And you can see the access point made a tremendous difference by going back to the 3500i. Of course, these ones I haven't changed. So in summary here, the wireless control system from Cisco it's really designed for managing your networks once they're deployed and to kind of troubleshoot them. But it does have a tool in there that allows you to put a map in there and to build obstacles, etc. And then a planning tool that actually helps you predict where the access point should go. And it has all the basics that you would expect in any site survey planning tool. It allows you to put the model in. It allows you to put the building construction in. It allows you to place the access points and move them around, change antennas, etc. If you use the Air Magnet Survey Pro tool, you'll be able to do many of the same features that you've done here. The benefit is with the Air Magnet tool is it actually is a better predictive tool. And this is why Cisco recommend that you use that tool because even though I'm doing the same things here, how good the predictive nature is, is a matter of how good the model is within the tool, how many parameters it captures within the tool. Those things makes a difference to how you actually calculate a accurate or relatively accurate plan for the site survey. So again, what we've demonstrated here is the basic concepts that you'd use in any survey predictive tool. The advantage here, of course, of using the WCS tool is once I've got it working and it actually does predict fairly well, I'll be able to use this down the road for my IT administrators to therefore manage and help troubleshoot problems that I have with my wireless LAN post-deployment. So what did we cover? We talked briefly about the Air Magnet Planner tool. And we talked about how this is a, a, I personally really, really like this tool. And it's great prediction of your planning. And again, once you've done it and you've actually done your site survey, you can always go back and refine it and calibrate that model and then you can import that information into your Cisco wireless control system. 
we then talked about using the Cisco wireless control system for doing a planning and again you know this can be a good way to go it certainly saves a bit of cost if you're already investing into the wireless control system um, it's perhaps not got as many options and is perhaps not as accurate I think as the air magnet planner in my personal opinion but it's still a good tool to use and then we went through a demonstration of using this wireless control system and you know we put in the floor plans we put in the walls and we predicted where the access points would be and again the main thing here is the more information you put in the better the tool please make sure you put in the right access points that you plan to do your survey with and also play with the antennas these predictive tools can be quite nice if you think there's going to be a difficult coverage area um, then try putting in some directional antennas some panel antennas and things like that and again these tools can be used for indoors and outdoors we in our demonstration used an indoor environment because that's the most common that you're going to use but these tools can also be used in an outdoor environment as well so have fun using these tools